Hello, folks. I am the one, the only. I am a hobo, Tom. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, I hope this does bring some levity to your past couple of weeks. Oh my, oh my, my. Oh, hell yeah. I have a lot of shout outs to get, folks. I'd like to thank everyone that's been interacting with me over on Discord and those sending out comments. I have to kind of upload stuff. Uh, this is Tuesday, so this is an impact show. Are we making a thread? Hey, who books this stuff? This was this was this was its normal impact weirdness. That's okay, so let's start off with some shout outs though. Let's see here, I'm gonna do this in reverse order because some of these names somewhat look familiar. You want Gall Glow 13? You just got tossed out of here. Tim, you sir didn't get tossed out of here, but you walked out of here. Dario Cueto the second. You just told Nikki Cross to take it all off. Gian Pop F, you sir definitely know you're a kung fu fighting. Vince's penis. Oh my F and G. The mid card act. You, sir, are making Nikki Cross go crazy because you're her tag team partner?
And finally, Mike V. Natalia, superior. Becky Lynch, inferior. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I do appreciate your support. I love the fact that you somewhat interact with me. As you can tell, I'm going out tomorrow. So I had to shave up, clean up. Not not the scruffy hobo anymore. Um, I think I'll just relate one funny story I had today. I had to go out do some banking done. Bills still have to get paid. Even through this whole coronavirus thing. And I went up to Walmart, and I realized that it was weird because Walmart had stuff in stock that had stuff not in stock. Like, they had water. They had cases of water. Good for them. No toilet paper. No cleaning. No, me no medicinal alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. And when I took a look at their meat case and the bread case, it was weird. The only bread that was missing from my Walmart was the cheap 88 cent loaf of bread. If you want to spend like $2 more for the Arnold's or Pepperidge Farm bread, it was there. Uh, people were complaining that bread was missing. They had bread. They just didn't have the 88 cent loaf. That's all. That's always the first thing to go anyway. And then in their meat department, they had like plain, because I got it because it's getting ready for Easter. They had a plain pork sirloin, plain pork loin, plain pork ribs, plain ground beef, plain steaks, uh, chicken tenderloins, Chicken breasts, chicken thighs, uh, drumsticks, like the super-sized bag of chicken wings. But then once you wanted to get anything like that already came pre-seasoned, like I know Smithfield Farms, they make, I think just as a quick example, they have like a Italian, like a mesquite, mesquite um, flavored pork loin. Or with like, or or was it like it was something with like sun dried tomatoes, but it already came seasoned. All that stuff was out already, but they had everything else. So with the meats, they sold out of the expensive meats. But they have all the cheap meats. They had a whole case full, whole refrigerator case full of Monster Energy drink. Oh, wow. And a whole, again, refrigerated case full of beer. People are saying there's shortages. I don't know. They're either not paying, they don't want to pay for the bread, or they want to pay extra for the meat. And then they had, they still had sugar, flour. <laughs> the only thing I will say is that it was all just uh, great value or whatever Walmart's brand is. So that's to keep you guys updated. <laughs> Newsflash. Uh, when I went to Dollar Tree, I had to get cheese for bags. They had everything I needed. They had no cleaning products. They had paper plates. They had napkins. No toilet paper. But everything, every, I don't know why people bought so much toilet paper. Although I have heard reports that a lot of toilet paper is made in China. And like if one batch was contaminated, they just like said, that's it for everything. So I don't know if that's it. I don't know. I just hope you guys out there in YouTube, the YouTube universe are doing well. And everything's as okay with your life as it can be. But now we're on for, again, the weekly diversion. We'll, we'll step into the theater of the absurd. 
She goes, oh, who could book this? Wait a second. Don't she do this booking? No, no, no. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. That's the title of this episode. Mainly because of one real significant segment. But I do want to know who books this stuff. So let's see here. So in our opening match for Impact Wrestling, we had a eight-man challenge, uh, a first pin to the win. It was Willie Mack, Chris Bay, AC Romero, Dago, Rahit Raju, Jake Chris, Cousin Jake, and Trey. Yeah, that's eight. All vying for the number one contender match. I want to say it's going to be hell. It's going to be in April. Because I think that's right around, I want to say it's the 11th. I'm not too sure. I haven't changed my calendar. My calendar is still in March. Take a quick look at you over here. I want to say it's after WrestleMania weekend. So that would make it. Let's see. Let's, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that might make it. Yeah, the 11th. I was spot on. I only have their pay-per-views on Saturday, so, so that makes sense. All this stuff. I know President Donald Trump. Hail to the king, he is my master and commander. Hail to the king, he is the one who leads us. Hail to the chief, he is the one who leads us all. Um, he wants people back to work. Get back to work, you son of a bitch. They're fired. So... I think he wants people back to work after Easter. So that seems pretty good. I think in one report, he like really wants people back after like by like next week. He's like, okay, folks, we have to continue economic growth. I'm fine with that. I like having money. I have plans for my money. I like my money. It's really good money. I like my money. Show me the money, baby. Baby! But enough of that. Um, so here we have this uh, eight-person, again, single elimination match for the number one contender for the X Division title. And I was kind of shocked because generally the X Division in the past has always been these high flyers, amazingly in shape people. Uh, AC Romero, by, by no means of the imagination, is, is a big high flyer. Willie Mack's pretty cool, though. He, he definitely fits that X Division. He has that very Samoa Joe buildish. Um, I think the people who I knew wasn't going to win wasn't going to be Jake Chris. It wasn't going to be Rahit Raju. It wasn't going to be Cousin Jake. And I think they're done with Trey's mom. <laughs> Trey's mom. She got it going on. Who books? But uh, only because they're part of tag teams and they never win. Uh, so it starts Ma. So to start things off, AC Romero cleans the house, the biggest guy in the ring. That was pretty fun to see. Uh, William Mack. What the heck was that? Ear crud. Dried up soap or something. Uh, Willie Mack, he faces off Willie Mack. Really, that, that obviously AC Romero is a big boy. Yeah, just, just a, a shot or two is not going to do anything to, to AC Romero. But instead, uh, Bay, Chris Bay and Trey, they do a double drop kick on them. They kind of face off. These two are fast and amazing. I honestly thought when I saw this, I'm like, you know what? Trey could win this match. Continue his feud with Austin, Ace Austin. I almost said Austin Aries. That means like nearly taboo to say now. But uh, so they start, they do some fast, amazingly fast chain wrestling. Eventually, Trey's like, good job there. And then Bay just kicked his hand away. Uh, then Rahit Raju came in. He did the rolling neck breaker into the perfect flex. That was great. Uh, Cousin Jake, it's funny. He's like the only, the, he's like the third biggest guy there. So AC Romero definitely is the first biggest. I don't know. Cousin Jake might be the second biggest. Him and William Mack are pretty much tied, though. I'll say he's the third biggest guy, bat guy uh, Jay Chris. He comes in with that, those kicks until Willie starts to fly. 
Then Estego versus Train the Ring. Uh, yeah, D Daga. I say Daga. My my Anglican is terrible. Uh, Daga versus Stray. Daga, he does the Dragon Screw Leg Whip. He did that to or Heat Review. That to everyone. And then he made the ultimate mistake. He tried to body slam AC Romero. Not happening, folks. Uh, very, very, very bad idea. Because, yeah, no one's going to slam him. Then they did, like, some, like, amazing Tower of Doom with, like, six men. It was AC Romero was on top. And then it was, like, Chris Bay. Daga, second tier, then three people beneath them. It was Trey. J. Chris. Yeah, J. Chris took, took part of that. Uh, Cousin Jake. Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was, Chris, it was AC Romero at the top. Chris Bay, and Daga. Then it was Trey, J. Chris, and Cousin Jake. Rahit Raju said. Oh, no, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't Jay Chris. He didn't want nothing to do with that. Raheed Raju said, whatever. Uh, it was William Mac. Took part in that. And this one's not refusing to heal up. It itches like anything. So again, you had like this amazing six six person Tower of Doom spot. That was crazy. Uh, Raheed, he definitely wanted nothing to do with that spot. Trey, for the Northern Lights. On the one, hit the mood lock on the other, and then kind of spot fest, and everyone flies. And eventually, William Mack hits the six star frog splash. And William Mack's the number one contender whenever they get back to pay per views for the exhibition championship. That's a good. That's a good call, especially since Rich Swan, I think, is like legit out for a while. He has that like. All kind of shoulder surgery, I think. So, yeah, that puts you out for a while. So, William Mack won. I'll tell you what, this was fun. This is everything you expected to. Again, it had that hint of realism when you're like, Tago, you're not going to get him up. Like, AC Romero didn't have to no sell because that wasn't happening. This was a good surf and turf match. We had an OVE promo, uh, OVEs by itself, because Sammy Callahan is going back to Solomon Crow. He's the hacker. We'll get to him a little bit later. We have Moose. 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 Taking on Chase Stevens, one of the original Impact wrestlers from way back in the day. They're having like a whole... I think eventually they're going to have all the old Impact guys show up. Uh, Moose tried to end the match early. He went for that spear, hit the hit the post. Then uh, Chase Stevens had no chance. Uh, it was just the inevitable. There were some massive chops by Moose. Chase Stevens, he did get some offense in, so it wasn't bad. But again, it was all until the no hammer, no jackhammer needed spear, which kind of came out of nowhere. Moose pins Chase Stevens. Moose. And then he pins him for the one, two, three, and beats him up. And then... Suicide is back. Wait a second. Suicide's always been back. That was TJP's old gimmick. Someone brought back the character Suicide. Of course, this one, uh, this course wasn't after and Moose decided to use a metal chair too. So again, M Moose is great. This was a fun match. It did what it was supposed to do. Reintroduce us to Suicide, some old Impact wrestlers and Chase Stevens. It was a ham sandwich. And then, oh, this is so funny. We have a drunk Rosemary in a bar, like, hitting on this blonde bartender lady. As <laughs> dudes. Oh, what are do, I, do I have coronavirus? Do I have oh, lesbian virus? I don't know. But, yeah, it's like, then, uh, then, then Raven's there. Quote the Raven, nevermore. And Raven's awesome. It's good to see him back. He actually looks a lot better.
better too. But you knew it was Raven though. <laughs> I think someone said this is Raven and Versace. That's a good look for him. Then we had Reno Scum, Reno Scum taking on the Rascals. They really haven't done much with their tag division. Uh, the North held it forever. Eventually they're going to drop it, I think. Uh, Reno Scum, it's kind of fun. They jumped the, the Rascals. Uh, it was Pity City. Tez, Tez was still in there with the sweatshirt. Uh, Wentz eventually got shoved off the top rope. Then there was the, that stretch stomp. How you can protect yourself in that, I have no idea. And there was a stretch stomp, and that was it. I mean, this was a pretty quick match. The Rascals really didn't get much offense in. It was okay. It was a surprise. I'm like, Reno Scum won? For that surprise, it's a cheeseburger match. Then we get Sue Young getting ready for ready for her, her battle in, in, in the Realm. It's like, took a dagger. She's like, it's like, Whoa, that's, that's a legitimate weapon. Wait a second. They can't use a legitimate weapon. They can only use, like, blunt weapons. Like, things they can, like, no-sell. Like, like crowbars. Thumbtacks. Yeah, no-selling a sledgehammer. Kendo sticks. I don't know. So, again, but, again, this was just a legitimate weapon. And uh, then there's a teal Dashwood promo. God, why? Why, Tennille? You know, it didn't work. You tried this garbage in WWE. Why do you think it's going to work here? Who books this stuff? And that's the theme of this show. And there's a cancel culture, not a delete. Oh, wait, that's that's gimmick infringement. I can't say delete. Delete! It's a deleted. Culture. Delete! Now, it's a cancel culture with Joey Ryan. They're, he's going to have to cancel the Deaners. Because, well, they're the Deaners. They're, they're redneck hillbilly people. And you have the Deaner from the, the Deaner compound. He's like, well, yeah, I was staring at Katie Ford's tits. Like, where'd she stare? He's like, yeah, I was staring too. Did you know me how big they were? Yeah, do you see that booty on her? Yeah, she has that junk in that Again, they were just talking about, yeah, it's like, like, we're, I guess, so bad, but she's all there, though. I don't know. And then there was Sammy Callahan. He was like, <laughs> he honestly looked in some cramped server room. He, he looked like in, like, I think where I used to work, we had a server room. It was literally like a janitor closet that had all the wires and stuff in it. That's where that's where Sammy Callen looked to be. Solomon Crow 2.0. Who knows? Uh, let's see here. Then it was OV OV taking on Rhino and Sabu. Sabu's still good. Sabu's aged. He got old quick, unfortunately. I met him once too in the mall. Great guy. But man, he got old. It's just, his like hairline's like it's like mine now, except for he still has it growing out the back. Not necessarily the best look. And then su even Super Genie looks like she's getting up there in age. I think that's his like legit real wife. I think that's his sec. Don't quote me. I think it's his second wife though. I don't know. But that's just funny though. Super Genie says, and Sabu's the best, though. Sabu's just getting old. He couldn't do the triple flip. I was so sad. Uh, Dave Chris starts off the match. Does a classic step over to hole on Sabu. Uh, then you have Madman Fulton takes takes on Rhino. Big versus Big. Way it goes. Uh, Sabu. Sabu's insane. He just like... Wait, who was it? Yeah, he like tossed... Dave Chris and to Man Man Fulton and then did a flying drop kick to the outside. That was pretty good. And then Super Genie, like so quiet and assuming. He can toss a steel chair, folks. Cause she tossed it literally over the head of Man Man Fulton, who is at least 6'5. And he, Sabu caught the chair. 
and just like threw it right at Madman Fulton's head. That was great. And then there was the press slam that Sabu ate in the ring. Um, Sabu did the flip off the chair. He did the dive off the chair. It wasn't his pen, a triple flip. He went running, run, 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 chair, top rope, outside. So it wasn't his triple flip. Because I tell you what, that triple flip moonsault was a thing of absolute beauty. When I saw that, I'm like, wrestlers can do that? See, it's one of those things. You use it, you bring a chair in the ring, you bring a chair in the ring, but you don't necessarily use it as a weapon. You use it to assist you. You can't de- you can't get DQ'd like that. Uh, then Dave Christ eventually eats a gore. Match over. It was fun. It's always good to, Sabu, to see Sabu wrestle. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we finally got to go to the Undead Run. I have the powers of darkness. Uh, so you have the Sinister Minister, uh, James Mitchell there, Havoc, and Sue Young. They get ready for battle. Havoc grabs a crowbar. Sue <laughs> Young finds a sword. Whoa, wait a second. The crowbar, I understand. What's a sword just hanging around there? Uh... And then it, it said, this is too violent for for Twitch. Listen, Twitch, you showed practically a live sex show with Rob Van Dam, a live sex threesome with Rob Van Dam, Katie Forbes, and, and her girlfriend. So you can't show this in the most contrived scene ever? Listen, have you seen what some of those Twitch streamers get away with? They get, get away with a lot, even the female Twitch streamers. You can tell when they're they're they're, watch, they're watching the the um, pornography, the X-rated movies, because they just sit there with their legs spread open in their chair and just diddle themselves, for lack of a better term. And they show it live on Twitch, although although you do get suspended afterwards. So, but this was like nothing. So what happened in this match? Um, Havoc beats down because I saw it on I saw it on, on YouTube. I, I want to give you guys a whole deal. So uh, Havoc has a crowbar. Su Young has a sword. Havoc begins to beat up Su Young with crowbar. Uh, eventually, Su Young finds the rope she brought that she got hung with, starts to choke out Su Young with it, and then so she strangles Havoc with 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 her own rope. And then, like, some guy comes out and, like, starts, the baseball band starts to beat up Su Young. And then Su Young just, like, like, just says, I've had enough of this, just, like, cuts him in the throat. And, of course, it's, it's like, this weird demonic black blood from spewing out. Uh, then Su Young and Havoc, again, they get, they get beat up by... The, the minions, because then Havoc comes back, starts to strangle Su Young with the rope. Um, yeah, then Havoc gets the out because Su Young picked up the crowbar. And then James Mitchell had enough. He's like, My minions get them! And the minions. And it was just like the cheesiest thing, though. Because. What was happening right before the minions is that Su Young actually put the mandible claw. Now, now that can someone read my note? Uh, she put the mandible claw onto a havoc, had her pinned to the ground, took her sword. She was going to run that sword right through Havoc's head. That would have been messy. But it was stopped by the sinister minister from, from killing Havoc, because again, that would have been murder on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can go to jail for that. Then the minister calls up his minions and he banishes and like there's like various people in like states of disarray or torture around James Mitchell. And Sue Young and Havoc get banished to the wastelands of the undead realm, which is ironically some desert outside of Las Vegas in Nevada. So, so that whole thing, that was ridiculous. 
That was just a can of soup. And then we finally get to the main event of the evening. Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am a host. I haven't made a video this long in a while. But again, in the main event of the evening, we have Tessa Blanchard and Eddie Edwards taking on Ty Valkyrie and Big Mike Elgin. This is actually pretty fun. A lot of fun stuff going on. Taya, oh, she, she's Taya. She knows that she knows how to get her cheap shots in. Uh, Mike Elgin, ooh, I never want to get shot by him. I never want to get shot by him. Never want to get shot by Sin Cara. I never want to get shot by Minoru Suzuki. Because unless Minoru Suzuki likes you, you're leaving with bruises. Uh, Mike Elgin had the Blue Thunder Bomb, then it became Tessa and Taya. And it was almost a. Um, and I'll tell you what, uh, Ty, uh, Mike Elgin blind tagged himself in. Taya had Tessa and passed off Tessa, and it was almost a super bomb. And that would have killed poor Tessa Blanchard. Tatalia Blanchard would no longer have a daughter. She would be some greasy saint on a wrestling mat. But she uh, countered that into a Huracurana. Eddie Edwards got the hot tag. And then as soon as that happened, Bravo jumped on the apron. Of course, they he beat up Bravo. They kicked him off. It was a double dive on to everyone on the outside. It was a, a tiger driver by Eddie Edwards onto Mike Elgin. But Ty makes the save there. Eddie Edwards missed. Oh, Eddie Edwards like 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 booted Ty in the face. Yeah, and then of course there was gonna be that face miscue, but that didn't happen. Eddie Edwards says, No, 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 Tessa, you're my partner for now. But yeah, then Mike Elgin, Eddie Edwards talked Elgin like clothesline. Tessa out of her panties. That was amazing. There's so many counters. Then there was the Elgin bomb on to Eddie Edwards. Taya Valkyrie and Mike Elgin win. This was a pretty fun match. I, I like the way they do the intergender match. Even though there are strikes, it just feels like a wrestling match. This was a surf and turf match. And the thing about this is that, is that whoa, I don't know what happened, but Taya legit got busted open like right underneath her eye. I don't know. I, I've heard things about Tessa. Eddie Edwards is a pretty safe worker. Tessa's, Tessa's the one I'm worried about, and I shouldn't be rubbing my face because of coronavirus. But that's okay. And I know where my hands have been. Isn't it scary that, that you can actually say this? Like, I don't, I don't can touch my face. I know where my hands have been. That sounds terrible. Uh, then to end the show, because there were still five minutes left, I'm like, huh? Five minutes left? So they did the ending vignette. Impact Wrestling has become like Lucha Underground. And that could only help it. Although I don't know how much good it did. Lucha Underground though. But then there. So you have Sue Young and a Havoc. Wandering through the Nevada desert. And you can tell it's the Nevada desert. Cause there's, and it has to be somewhere close by. Because it looked like they were literally dropped off there. Because there were tire tracks. All over the place. Like, no, no, no. This is not, an, oh, oh, well, those are the Nesca Circle Line. No, these are straight 4x4 four four tire tracks all over this desert. And then Rosemary pops up. So like, what was she doing in the Undead Wasteland? She's there. <laughs> oh, this is just funny, though. It's just so bad acting. She talks to, because cause you can see that Sue Young and Havoc just don't like being like banished to this wasteland with each other. Um, she had the best line. She's like, well, why don't you go back to trusting the lady with a big smile? That, folks, has to be an Alice in Wonderland Cheshire cat thing. Again, who books this, Jack? Because uh, then she transports them back and, like, they walk through the curtain. They um, confront Rev the, the demon deacon, Reverend James Mitchell. Uh, Sue pulls that dagger out. 
And Havoc says, no, she takes the dagger from Sue. And then it's like, Havoc. You can tell them, like, like, the most cheesy cornball way. Turn the knife around. Like, st stabbed. James Mitchell. And then the next thing you see, Mitchell is, he's ascending to this bright place with clouds and a blue sky. And there were kittens sitting on clouds and abyss with a bag full of thumbtacks. Is this James Mitchell's heaven? Or is this James Mitchell's hell? And literally the last thing you heard him say, who books? Who books this shit? And then it went blank. I don't think he was supposed to say that. But he was looking around, seeing kittens on clouds. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good version of heaven to me, folks. Um, I want to know, because they've shown Abyss, the demon Reverend James Mitchell, Rosemary, where's Crazy Steve at? Who books this shit? And that was Impact Wrestling. So we get to give Impact Wrestling some love. Um, again, I have to be careful because I'm still on my copyright suspension. I th think I could do things a little bit differently because they are on Twitch stream. And again, once I go back to live streaming, I might do a live reaction versus just my reactions and, and post that later. So again, I'd like to know what you people thought about Impact Wrestling. I'll tell you what, even though they're pre-taped, there's still an audience there. It's still a form of entertainment to entertain the masses, to get our minds off of things. I think even said on the Sports Talk Network, um, I forget who it was, the one local guy said, you know what, just talk about anything because there's no sports to talk about. Like, this is getting depressing now. We need our sports. Pro wrestling's there, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, try to... Just live a normal life. I know I'm going up to Jacksonville. Unless I ban stuff. Because this is my paid vacation week. And we'll see what happens next week. So I have no idea, folks. All I know is that I'll probably be back. I don't think Wednesday night. Because, again, I am going to Jacksonville probably for most of the day. Thursday is going to be AEW. Friday. Smackdown, there's no wrestling Saturday or Sunday, and you'll see me back Monday. Everyone, bye. Oh, and there's plenty of places to get water, so just just don't kill each other for a dollar bottle of water. That's ridiculous. Bye.